Because let's be freaking honest here, the world is kind of turning to shit. And you might need a little bit of incentive just to navigate the planet and stay in a good mood so you can discard all the negativity and focus on all the things which are important and positive to you. Vigorous Steve here with the Vigorous Q&A for all of your bodybuilding related questions. Today's question is from Louis Majid. You said in a previous video that testosterone and Dianabol are the main steroids that cause positive mood changes. So what would be your ultimate happiness cycle look like? Well, Louis, there's a lot of compounds we can choose from. Many compounds that are considered performance enhancing drugs actually put you in a good mood. But when it comes to steroids, like you said, it's only the testosterone and the Dianabol that actually put you in a good mood. All of the other anabolic androgenic steroids, the dihydrotestosterone derivatives and the progestogenic 19 nors and aboldenone being a testosterone derivative or halotestin being a testosterone derivative directly, all of those seem to put you in a mood that's positive and good for training. But the rest of the day, it comes with a little bit of side effect that you probably didn't expect, like small irritability or anxiety or just the feeling of being left alone. It's the bioidentical hormones that, generally speaking, put you in a good mood. And the only compound that I consider not to be bioidentical that still puts you in a good mood is Dianabol. Now, testosterone converts into estradiol and Dianabol converts into methyl estradiol, which isn't the same as bioidentical estradiol. Again, your body doesn't methylate estradiol itself. There are no physiological functions in the body that are dependent on methyl estradiol. So this is purely a synthetic add-on. But uniquely to Dianabol, from dosages of 10 milligrams and upwards, it does seem to put people in a good mood, generally speaking. Now, again, you still have to control your serum estradiol levels because you're getting estradiol from the testosterone that you're taking. Fingers crossed you're doing a testosterone base when you're taking Dianabol because Dianabol will shut down the HPTA, so you need a testosterone base to keep your serum testosterone levels at least adequate within the reference range. And if you're a bodybuilder, feel free to go super physiological. So you probably need an aromatized inhibitor in this context because, again, testosterone converts into estradiol and Dianabol converts into methyl estradiol and you don't want too much estrogenic burden. Thus, you might need an aromatized inhibitor which will probably mitigate some of the effects. So it's a little bit of a balancing act regarding testosterone and Dianabol. Taking them together would most certainly require you to put some sort of aromatized inhibition in place. And whether that's coming from Mastrone, Boldenone, Primabolin or an aromatized inhibitor, those will ultimately reduce your mood slightly. So maybe you can get away with a testosterone replacement therapy dose of let's say 100 to 150 milligrams per week and then take 10 milligrams Dianabol sublingually ideally so you don't get so much conversion into methyl estradiol within the liver. You take your 10 milligrams Dianabol sublingually and this way you might not need an aromatized inhibitor or another method to keep your estradiol and methyl estradiol levels in range. Again, you don't rely on methyl estradiol, but at least you have to make sure that your estradiol levels stay within the reference range so you don't get this estrogenic burden. Now, it's not because the estrogen levels are low that your mood is going down. There's something uniquely to aromatized inhibitors and dihydrotestosterone derivatives or other reversely binding aromatized inhibitors that are steroidal. There's something to do with reducing estrogen conversion in the brain. And whether that's due to direct neurotoxicity or excitotoxicity or reduced estradiol concentrations within the brain itself, even though serum concentrations are still adequate, that I'm not exactly sure about. So again, thread carefully. Dianabol has been associated with neurotoxicity, just like most of the anabolic androgenic steroids that are out there. So keep that in mind. Maybe a low dose will allow you to get away without the use of an aromatized inhibitor, but a higher dose, a bodybuilder dose, you will certainly need something in place to prevent aromatization. DHEA and pregnenolone pretty much puts everybody in a good mood, but the dose here is the key. I already made a very detailed video about DHEA and pregnenolone. I'll link it at the end of this one. So as a quick reminder, dosages will range from 25 to 50 milligrams DHEA and 10 to 25 milligrams of pregnenolone split morning and evening. Both of these neurosteroids will keep DHEA, DHS sulfate, pregnenolone and pregnenolone sulfate and hopefully downstream allopregnenolone and pregnenolone levels in range as well as progesterone because again, you're shutting down your HPTA with testosterone and perhaps Dianabol if you decide to take that. Besides this protocol, even though it's not bioidentical, I don't recommend Dianabol, but still, if you're solely going for the mood boosting effects, then Dianabol does have its place. 
You're keeping your neural steroids to six hormones nicely balanced by supplementing with DHEA and pregnenolone. You might fulfill that pathway with ACG. When you're younger, you're, you should be able to keep your neural steroids within favorable ranges by taking 250 to 500 IOs ACG three times per week, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So whichever direction you might go, keeping your neural steroids balanced to your sex hormones will certainly put you in a good mood. Now, besides that, growth hormone will put you in a good mood, but the downside of growth hormone that it does make you sleepy and lethargic. So personally, I started taking my growth hormone before bed as of recently, and I already noticed that my mood has increased. And luckily for me, I don't feel lethargic at all yet because I'm only using 1.2 IUs of growth hormone before bed. Let's see what happens at 2 IUs or maybe even 2.4 IUs, pharmaceutical grades, nortropin growth hormone assuming you can keep your serum glucose concentrations in range mitigating some of the side effects which are associated with higher doses of growth hormone if you're able to tolerate that growth hormone makes you kind of giddy and in a good mood and you know feeling all relaxed and chill all day long that is a benefit of growth hormone albeit that such a high dose of growth hormone where you do start to feel giddy and um, funny and uh, happy-go-lucky all day, you'll probably end up spending an arm and a leg to get to that point. Now, when you get to a higher dose of growth hormone, of course, there is a certain amount of financial security involved because first you need to pay all of your bills and get all of your bodybuilding expansions and life expenses out of the way before you can afford a dose of, let's say, six to eight units of growth hormone. So if you're financially secure and you can pay all of your bills and you have some extra money to spare to spend on that much GH, life is pretty good already insulin also puts me in a good mood now again that's uniquely to me maybe i haven't really heard that from other people but if i take a long acting insulin five to ten i use of lantus upon waking i am in a better mood during that day i think part of that is because i follow a ketogenic diet if i take a little bit of insulin on a ketogenic diet my serum glucose concentrations are even more stable than without the insulin albeit that they're slightly lower obviously than without the insulin this puts me in a very good mood, helps me with cognition, allows me a much deeper state of ketosis. And then a combination of bioidentical hormones being testosterone, DHEA, and pregnenolone and growth hormone. That combination alone, biological hormones at effective dosages, mood enhancement galore. And this is one of the reasons why I wrote that ebook, the off-season cycles with bioidentical hormones ebook. If you follow those instructions to the T, I guarantee you, you will be in a good mood the entire off season. This is why I wrote that ebook because a productive off season is a happy off season, or when you're in a good mood, you have a productive off season. But it also means that when you're in a good mood 24 7, that you're way more productive with business. Let's be freaking honest here. Nobody likes to work. I don't like to work. I'd rather play video games or spend time with my wife or my cats or just go outside and actually see something of Bangkok where I live but I'm here doing my business so I can retire early. It's not that I actually enjoy working until four o'clock in the morning every single day of the week, but because I'm always in a good mood or the majority of the time by keeping my hormones nicely balanced, even when I'm completely drug free, I still focus on my hormone panel and make the most of it. If I'm in a good mood, I'm far more productive. I'm a way better husband. I'm a way better content provider. I work way harder because I don't feel stressed, I don't feel annoyed by little things, routine jobs that I have to do to keep the business afloat. When you're in a good mood, productivity is sky high. And this is why the previous cycle was a little bit complicated. I want to be in a perpetually good mood, feeling energetic, low stress, no irritation or annoyances or whatever else that could distract me from my work. The more I work, the earlier I can retire. And that's the grand master plan behind doing all of this. Now, besides the bioidentical hormones, modafinil will put you in a good mood, helps with productivity, 50 milligrams upon waking. It's exactly what I've been doing for the last couple of years or so. Modafinil has some serotonergic and dopaminergic effects. The exact effects of modafinil are still not 100% understood. But what I do know is that modafinil puts you in a good mood and makes you productive. It's very noticeable when you stop the modafinil, making it slightly addictive. And that's one of the reasons why I keep taking it. So please be forewarned before you decide to get on the modafinil cognition train. Coming off modafinil does have some drawbacks because you're no longer in a good mood and you're no longer that productive. And even though weaning off modafinil is easy, you can stop cold turkey and not get any withdrawal symptoms. 
you don't notice that you're less than you were before. And it's the same addictive stuff that you get with steroids. On steroids, you're horny and strong and positive aggression all the time. And with modafinil, you're happy and productive all the time. So again, keep that in mind, guys, before you decide to add any of these compounds into your protocol. PT141 might put you in a good mood, albeit indirectly, because, well, your um, libido will be severely heightened. And having a good, reliable and a consistent libido puts me in a good mood. And I'm sure many of you guys will agree with that. TB500. I notice that it puts me in a good mood because it lowers inflammation and just makes my body feel a little bit healthier, I would say. Now, you're not going to run TB500 to get mood boosting effects. That's a warm, welcome side effect. But I do notice that running TB500 at one milligram per day while I'm taking it seems to increase my mood. I've, my body feels a little bit healthier lower inflammatory states and maybe that's because tb500 is a partial sequence of a bioidentical hormone called thymosin beta 4 produced in the thymus but as you age the thymus shrinks and thymosin beta 4 concentrations seem to go down so when you're supplementing tb500 and i'm purely speculating here maybe you're restoring something similar to thymosin beta 4 to levels you had in the past when your thymus didn't shrink just quite yet. So you're simply backfilling this unique hormone for its overall healing properties, similar to how you're backfilling the testosterone or the DHEA or the pregnenolone or the growth hormone or whatever else you're taking in your bioidentical hormone protocol. So I do notice that from TB500, it has slight mood boosting effects, but I've never experienced that from BPC157, not through the injectable route or the oral route. I never noticed anything from BPC-157 besides its healing properties on connective tissue and the intestinal tract. No mood boosting effect, but since I combined TB-500 with BPC-157 to heal particular injuries or strains or connective tissue, but at least I get some mood boosting effects from the TB-500 itself. C-Max does increase my mood, makes me more calm, allows me to focus a little bit better, which puts me in a better mood. So that's a combination of modafinil and C-Max which seems to increase my mood overall. I haven't used it in months now. I have a very detailed and a comprehensive video comparing Cimax to Selenc, which I trialed both a couple months ago. So I'll link that at the end of this one. I didn't really notice a mood boosting effect from Selenc. I found it to be more stimulatory, but with Cimax, put me in a good mood, made me more calm. So maybe that's something you can look into. 500 micrograms intranasally upon waking and maybe another dose of 500 micrograms intranasally pre-workout or sometime in the afternoon. Again, if you take it too late during the day, it might keep you awake, might stimulate a little bit too much, even though Cimax, again, is not as stimulatory as Selenc. Morning dosing, afternoon dosing, or maybe a little bit later pre-workout, that seems to get the job done and puts me in an overall better mood compared to without running the Cimax. Same for cerebral lysin, even though I would take five to 10 milliliters before bed. And again, I've only taken cerebral lysin for a month in duration after I finished the Cimax and Selenc experiments. Five to 10 milliliters of cerebral lysin, healing your brain, causing a lot of neurogenesis overnight, making me wake up feeling so refreshed that after a good stretch, oh, and a good knuckle crack, I was ready to start the day. I found cerebral lysin to be highly beneficial. A single course of a month was able to put me in a perpetually good mood, it seems and undo a lot of the brain fog, which I would get after training and sometimes even the day after. Cerebral lysin was able to mitigate and resolve most of that. Of course, I started training less intense after coming off cycle, and now I'm continuing in those footsteps by really limiting the amount of sets that I'm taking to failure. So part of that, the mood boosting and cogni cognition boosting effects from cerebral lysin are still there, but it's also because I reduced my training intensity. And that I'd have had fluorona and some of the brain fog is returning. I might have to add the cerebral lysin in at 5 to 10 milliliters before bed for, let's say, a month in duration, just to undo some of the brain fog that I'm experiencing right now. And if you had good results with Cimax, Selenc, or cerebral lysin, and you like the feeling of neurogenesis improving your mood and your cognition, maybe then fluvoxamine, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, might be end stage mood enhancement. Again, this is a long-time commitment, just like Accutane is a long-time commitment. So please try all of the other methods first to resolve your acne before resulting to Accutane. 
And it's the same for an SSRI. Try all of the other methods first. Clean up your life, clean up your act, remove the stress, try to become financially secure. And if you'd like neurogenesis perpetually, then maybe look into a low-dose fluvoxamine before bed to help you with your mood and of course the neurogenesis which comes along with that by increasing your serotonin concentrations in the brain. Just keep in mind that if you're using 5-HTP, a building block for serotonin, which is known to increase your mood and reduce appetite slightly, if you're taking 100 milligrams or any dose of 5-HTP before bed, discontinue that first before you consider fluvoxamine because the last thing you want is symptoms related to serotonin syndrome. So there is a little bit of a manual and prerequisites before you can even attempt to get on an SSRI. Still, the people that I know that are running fluvoxamine are, well, say that it was a life-changing event. So take from that what you will. There's a couple supplements which can be recommended. A saffron extract helps to reduce anxiety and improve mood overall. Again, 5-HTP if you're not using an SSRI, or maybe use L-tryptophan, which is another precursor for serotonin. Melatonin, three to six milligrams before bed, might help with your mood overall by making you feel more rested when you wake up. Again, allowing you to sleep and get into a deeper state of sleep earlier. Glycine before bed seems to increase people's moods slightly by making them a little bit more calm. So all these things you can look into. Besides these performance enhancing drugs, I'm sure there's many other out there that might potentially increase your mood or help with your mood or help with the reduction of anxiety and balance you out for the better, allowing you to be more productive and allow you to go through life happy-go-lucky and stress-free. Because let's be freaking honest here, the world is kind of turning to shit and you might need a little bit of incentive just to navigate this shitty planet and stay in a good mood so you can discard all the negativity and focus on all the things which are important and positive to you. I'll leave it here. Let me know your favorite compounds to stay in a good mood perpetually. I'd love to hear about it because now when I got that question and I look at my cycle design, the majority of the stuff is there to put me in a good mood, allowing me to stay productive and focus on the positive things, having a good outcome for my bodybuilding. But well, a lot of the compounds that I put in my protocol are not directly related to bodybuilding. Oh, and before I forget, yes, the Mod C, the NAD+, the injectable glutathione, and the MNN also puts me in a good mood because I feel healthier and a lot more energetic. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find the next Vigorous Q&A this weekend. I might not post it still because there's still so many questions that I still have to answer. You guys posted over 100 comments with a ton of interesting questions. So I'll do my absolute best to get through most of them as soon as possible. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the description section. Have a look at some of my sponsors and affiliates so you can save yourself some money while shopping online. If you're not exactly sure about your sex hormone and neural steroid concentrations, I now have a budget panel over at Merrick Health, which allows you to check your total testosterone, your estradiol, your DHA sulfate, and some of the other hormones which might be related to mood and your overall state of health. The Vigor Steve checkup panel is half price of the Vigor Steve full male lab panel. Head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Vigorous so you can have a look and see if this panel is applicable for you, saving yourself some money in the process because the code Vigorous gets you 10% off. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. These biceps are now perpetually in a good mood thanks to some pharmacological aids and all of the lovely comments from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.